Prison politics are crazy. And at this point of time, I was put on the clock, literally. I was told because the car that I was a part of had dissolved, I could either join another car by the morning or I could get beat, beat out. Ultimately, that would lead to me being sent to a higher level institution. I would definitely get into more altercations up there because I would be no longer associated with my car. It would be issues. And man, I'd probably run my release date up again. Again, because over the course of these years, catching charges here and there, my release date had got pushed back all the way to 2021. I could get it back down, but I'd have to stay out of trouble for X amount of time to start earning a certain amount of good time again. I could do nothing but benefit if I could find a way to just stay on this level too and stay out of trouble. I could see my girl who I haven't seen for over a year because she was a former employee at Greensville and they weren't going to let her come there. And this was my opportunity to, you know, sit down face to face, hold her hand, whatever it was, salvage what was quietly being destroyed by prison because all we had was letters and phone stress. It was bad, but I cared about her. I cared about the relationship. I didn't want it to end. And as much as I didn't want to fall in line with another car, I knew I had no choice. I wanted to see her. I wanted to come home sooner rather than later. And I felt like even though I'd be pulled back into the same situation where if something happened, I'd have to go because I'm a part of this car still, it might be different. I'm on a lower level. I could figure it out. But at the very least, it would buy me time. Buy me enough time to at least sit down and see her once, maybe twice, before I figured I couldn't keep doing this and live this way of life. I don't know. But it gave me time on the clock. So I remember when my homeboy called me. <laughs> he said, hey, life. <laughs> I was so happy. I didn't really recognize, you know, who his voice was or voice belonged to at first. But I came, you know, turned around and seen him smile. And I was like, hey, that's my bro. And again, I'm grateful I had a reputation because a good reputation, not because I was some dude in there being ultra aggressive. I was just respectful. I helped people. This is my brother from another institution, Sussex, too. And we used to go to programs together, school, whatever, build. And we just had that bond, play chess. So when I pulled up to the fence to holler at him, I'm like, man, yo, what's good? He said, no, nah, what's good with you? I said, man, just getting used to the camp. He said, I heard. <laughs> just like that. He's like, is there anything I could help you with? And without hesitation, because I knew he could offer me a spot in his car and I wouldn't have any issues on that camp because they were respected. I said, yeah, bro. And we didn't really have to say too much because he already knew what was going on as far as the politics, him being a big homie up there. And he was just like, I got you. You good. I see you in the morning. That's all he said. And that was it. I trusted him. I knew I was good. But I also knew that I would continue to be affiliated to this car. And I could get sucked right back into the nasty politics of prison. But at least I could get on the phone and call my girl and say, I figured out a way. It's okay. I'm going to see you soon. You'll be able to come visit. And that's all I was looking forward to. Um... And as I did that that night, I remember her being happy and my anxiety still being up because now I would have to go out on the yard in the morning and meet the meet the new homies and learn new stuff and politics and all that. I had to reimmerse myself in this world that I was trying to escape by any means, trying to phase out of. But it's about survival. And sometimes when it comes to survival, you got to be strategic. Over the next couple of days, the couple of brothers that were also a part of the car that I was that weren't given the opportunity to join a new car because their reputations weren't right, um, they were beat on the yard. And it wasn't just them. It was some other brothers that ended up going to the hole until they eventually put us the camp on lockdown. Too many fights in the yard at one time. They knew eventually, you know, it was it was gang related. I remember thinking to myself, I said, at least I didn't have to go through that. You know what I'm saying? At least... I'm okay for now. But I also recognized real quick that though this was a level two, it was extremely segregated. It was clicked up either with your city or your car, etc. And not that you couldn't be neutral, but man, this camp was different. And I knew it from the start. I knew that I was wrong. I had miscalculated. I thought that going to a level two would mean that it was easier. I could stay out of trouble and all that. But this camp was active. I mean, they had it all. It was the streets. And I guess in hindsight, it makes sense. It was in the middle of Tidewater, seven cities, which 
that usually doesn't happen. Most prisons are in the middle of the country. But man, being where this prison was located, the type of COs there, the brothers that was, you know, doing their time there, man, they made it a crazy place.